right. Now, coming up Saturday, we have WWE Backlash coming live from Puerto Rico. Uh, there's been some interesting matches, interesting buildups to this. Um, the main event will definitely be Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar, especially considering what happened when uh, Lesnar turned on for the tag team match to give Cody another title shot. Uh, we also have Sami Zayn and KO, the uh, undisputed tag team champs, teaming up with Matt Riddle to go against the bloodline, Jimmy and Jay Uso and Solo Sokoa. And we also have a triple threat USA United States championship match between Austin Theory, Bobby Lashley, and Bronson Reed. We also have the women's, the Raw Women's Championship, Bianca Belair taking on EO Sky. Uh, we also have SmackDown's Women's Championship as well, Rhea Ripley, the champ, going against Selena Vega. We have a random match, Seth Rollins versus Omos. Don't know where that one came from. Mm -hmm. And we're actually going to have a street fight with the host of Backlash, Bad Bunny taking on Damian Priest. So, fellas, um, let's start. Let's start with that match, Bad Bunny and Damian Priest. What are you going to be your predictions for that match? The way Bad Bunny swings the kendo stick, I think it'll be a pretty good match. Honestly, he looked uh, looked out of place with that. Do you think they're going to put him over? I, I think so. I think that's the reason for it being a street fight because. When you when there's anything goes, then the the celebrity or the non wrestler has more of an advantage. If this were a one on one straight up match, then absolutely not. Damian Priest is a professional wrestler. Bad Bunny is not, so Priest would go over. When you got a street fight and anything goes, you can pull out any kind of surprises. I mean, Johnny Knoxville beat Sami Zayn at WrestleMania because it was anything goes, and look what happened. So I think Bad Bunny is going over here. I agree with you now that you explain it that way. Yeah, and I don't think Bad Bunny's terrible, honestly. Oh, no. no he's far from it. Far yeah. from it. Hell, he had a match with Miz and Morrison, and he flat out performed. So. And, and the Rumble. Don't forget the Rumble. I mean, Yes, he did in the Rumble, too. Yes, he did. I mean, for them to put him in a one-on-one -on -one match, you know, they obviously see something in him, so... I think it's going to be a good match. It may actually steal the show for all we know. But, yeah, I think uh, it's going to be good and Bad Bunny is going over. He's one of those guys that he's not a wrestler, but he respects the business. And we've talked about that on a multitude of occasions. And he's not going to go out and embarrass himself. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to go Bad Bunny no, to go over not. on this one. And Damien, it, they're good, good friends in real life. So he's definitely going to do everything in his power to protect them. And he's going and to put them over. good over. And yeah. make him, I was getting to that, but make you know, he's going to make him look good in the process. Bad Bunny is going over. Yeah. I think there will be some help from uh, LWO with that as well, because yeah. we know Judgment Day will get involved. So the LWO will cancel them out. And like you guys said, I, th I definitely think Bad Bunny is going over. Yeah. Uh, Nuxie? Uh, have the LWO interfere and, and have Bad Bunny run that way. Maybe have so. Uh... Uh, Santos Escobar do something to help him win the match or something. That way, you know, Priest doesn't look weak. He, he still puts him over and he's it's a street fight. That's a good way to, to let Priest put him over and still not lose face. Yeah. Yeah. That that sounds about right. And uh so next match, the most random of matches ever. Uh, main event. Omar's. <laughs> Omos taking on Seth freaking Rollins. Um, this they, match came out of freaking nowhere. Uh, so uh, what do you guys think about this? And oh, how you come think on, this go? wasn't a dream match. <laughs> this <laughs> is what the a, fans asked for. <laughs> I'll get a match with Seth freaking Rollins come out of freaking nowhere. I mean, <laughs> I was I was hoping they would at least explain it on TV. Like on Raw, I thought they're going to cut a promo explain why the match was going down. It literally came out of nowhere. They just showed up and said, hey, we're going to fight and I'm going to beat you, Omos. No reason, no explanation as to why. This is not a pay-per-view match. This is a Raw match. It's like a Raw semi-main event. Not even a pay-per-view, just a, hey, we just, except for Omos, that's an Omos, that's just the match we're having. Not, it's on the pay-per-view and there's no reason, just because. I mean, it's like a house show main event. <laughs> why? Yeah. I don't know. This why screams we... Vince. This screams Vince. There's no other way to put it. I'm sorry. But Vince, I mean, I, I don't even know. Vince would at least have a storyline behind Vince. Vince had Edge and Booker T fight over shampoo. So you would think he would come up with some kind of story behind it. At least try. 
At least for uh, we got nothing. Uh, remember when Booker T went to the grocery store and Austin took the crap out of him? That's a great TV right there. That was, yeah. That was beautiful. See, Vince, Vince is it all bad. Yeah, he can do oh, some man. good things if he actually applies himself. Maybe, okay, so maybe this week on Raw, they'll have something to kind of push that. Uh, maybe Seth will get attacked or something. I don't know. That Even still, that's not going to save the match being made as this was a good idea. True. Now, if they would have started off with Omos just attacking Rollins, out of nowhere, and then you created this match. Maybe I, I could see then, that. Yeah, that's but, called a build. Not, not this way. You're hustling backwards at this point. We're gonna have Penta do a run in for no reason. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There's a storyline I pay to see. Penta's random yeah. run ins. Well, so I who's mean, so, so who's going over? Time where um, Seth was talking to Cena when he made his come return and said something and then. Cena kind of let him know, hey, look, Omas is behind you, and then next thing you know, we have a bunch of awkwardness. But even that didn't work. Yeah, yeah, it did not. So what do you guys predict for this match? The way Omos wins, and the, the match will probably be four minutes long. I mean, I don't know. Omos, I guess, because he needs to push, especially after losing that mania. Yeah. Seth is going to be over regardless. So... I I would give it to if you want to push Omos as this big monster, then I will put Omos over. If Seth wins, then I'm going to question why this match even took place in the first place. He doesn't need the to. Match bury. hasn't happened, and we're questioning it. Is Seth doesn't need to push, and Omos <laughs> doesn't need the burial. So why is this <laughs> the even, match hasn't um, happened, and we're questioning it? But, but um, oh, well, you know what. And Omos win would kind of put him in favor of being involved in that world title tournament. Just getting the belt. It would. It, it would make up for WrestleMania or him and Brock. Yeah. I mean, he's not going to win the world title, but at least gives him in the picture. They can have a tournament for that title at Night of Champions. Yeah. Yeah. That's that, that they haven't announced the participants. They'll probably do that right after backlash when the new rosters are set to say this is the tournament for the world championship. Yeah. You in Saudi Arabia, so you know. Of course, yeah. Blood, the <laughs> blood course. money pay per view, if you will. <laughs> yeah, that'd be oh my god! I was watching it by himself. All right, so let me. And then Mansoor wins it. There you go. Oh, that's uh, there you go, Mansoor. Oh, I'm sorry, Mansoor. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So Nuxi, who you got winning the match? I can't see Rollins losing to him. I really can't. But, you know, anything's possible in the world of wrestling. So they are trying to push almost for something. You know, he 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 was best to me when he was AJ's bodyguard and he was just behind the side. He's got – he wasn't awful against Lesnar. I'll give him credit for that. But I just don't see him as being in the main event. Yeah. This is tough for me to call, so I have to flip a coin on this one. I'm just going to go Seth. World champion, so just because you're gigantic and you know, I mean, at least almost is more agile than Kali and is more believable. So, I yeah, I will give him that. Rollins, yeah, so, yeah, yeah I, I'll definitely give him that. So, it'll be a risk to see how that match goes. Now, the also the most random of women's championship matches, Bianca Bella taking on EO, EO Sky. I know there was a situation where the rest of Damage Control questioned Bailey about being involved in the match for the championship. Uh, or at least to see who would contend for the championship, especially considering Bailey has consistently lost to Bianca, and they allow EO to take the uh, to be in that match, and she ended up winning it to be able to take on Bianca. But other than that, I mean, I know Bianca's had some beef with Damage Control ever since SummerSlam, but uh, I what think, do you guys think? I, I think this is going to lead to a storyline where we're going to see EO and Dakota break away from Bailey. Um, we did kind of see hints at them not being happy over her winning the title shot and then giving it up to EO, like you mentioned. So I think this is going to kind of break away that group, um, which is sad because aside from the one of the tag titles, they didn't really do much. They weren't the non-stop, unstoppable force in the women's division. They just, you know, got on people's nerves a bit. Um as far as who's going over, I don't see EO winning it. I would love to see EO win a world championship in the future, but this ain't it. Not yet. 
he will win a, a world championship at some point, but this ain't the time. And let's also acknowledge that on this particular day, Bianca Belair, if she hangs on to the, uh, to the goal coming into this match, which I don't see why she wouldn't, she will be the longest reigning Raw Women's Champion in history. So hopefully WWE will acknowledge that. And Bianca's definitely going over. What do you think, Noxie? Bianca losing. Uh, you know, she's a pretty good wrestler, but you know, I don't see them taking the knock off Bianca. But I do see, like you guys were talking about, I do see them breaking up damage at the same time. I think Ronda Rousey getting hurt put a wrench in a lot of plans because her and Shayna Baszler were supposed to be the tag champs. I think one time Ronda broke her arm or hurt her arm or something. So I think that kind of put a wrench in a lot of plans. Yeah, um, I'm with you guys. I, I think for the most part, Bianca is going to win this. Um, I think it's going to be a very entertaining match. You know, the high flying of EO going against the power and strength of Bianca, which is always makes for, you know, compromising styles always can make for some good matches. So I thought I think it will be some real good storytelling in that match. And the other women's championship ma- uh, match, uh, SmackDown women's champion, uh, Rhea Ripley taking on Selena Vega. Uh, of course, we know there's been uh, beef between Judgment Day and the LWO. So, of course, Selena just asked for a title match and she got it. But it does, does kind of st- tie into the beef overall between the two groups. Uh, so how do you think that match will play out? Uh, obviously, Rhea's going to win, but I think Selena's going to put on a good showing. I think we're going to uh, really see what she can do in the ring. We haven't gotten a lot of that, but I think she's going to put on a good show. And she's going to come close, but of course, Rhea just won the belt, and she's the big heel powerhouse. I think Rhea's keeping that belt to next year's WrestleMania. So, um, yeah, Rhea on this one. Zelina's going to do a good job. Well, technically, she'll keep that belt until the until she exchanges with Bianca Belair. Well, but yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying, but. Zelina Vega can put on a good match when given an opportunity. And I think this is definitely going to be a test for her. She obviously Rhea Ripley will go over, but if they let but if Zelina Vega can put on a good show, then we may see her in the title picture at some point. And I would love I would love for her to put on a good show, which I think she will. And she's and then she seems like a really good person, doesn't really have a um, issues with the locker room and and again this is just like with um eo sky and bianca belair with the compromising styles of course the old saying styles make fights rhea ripley will go over but i think zelina will put on a good show and come ju- close but perhaps just one or two moves uh, she'll fall one or two moves short I think uh, there's an obvious storyline tie-in because she's in the LWO and they've got heat with the Judgment Day. And she's also Puerto Rican, so don't forget that. That's a good. Yeah, yeah so that's that's going to give her, you know, the hometown uh, advantage and the hometown pop. Yeah, I don't like the female Rey Mysterio because you know Zelina's not the biggest girl in the world, and he is pretty good size lady. So, and having him kind of mentor her is a cool thing. I saw it. he was talking to her and telling her just to go with her heart. And, you know, use her heart and her head in the match, and she'll have a chance. I think she'll, it'll be a great match. I think she'll have, they'll let her, you know, show what she can do. But, you know, obviously, Rhea just won the belt and they're pushing her hard. So she's not going to lose, I don't think. But it's cool to tie in the whole nationality. And I don't have a problem with that. It makes sense. It's not like it's the almost Rollins match, they just pulled out of left field or somewhere. That's a storyline. And you have her being Puerto Rican. So there's that. So, um, yeah. And I'm sure her husband has taught her. A thing or two. So when Malachi beat her husband, I'm sure she, she, she's obviously in great shape if you've see, seen her abs. Good morning. So she, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I just think you spent so much building the story with Rhea being able to win this championship. She's definitely not losing it now. But because, you know, they typically with the hometown, they want to make sure the hometown people get something. So there'll be something after the match that Selena does. They'll make the fans pop and, you know, have a nice feel good story. But we all know Rhea Ripley is taking because it's going to continue to reign as women's champ more than likely till WrestleMania. Yeah, I think they're actually going to probably put this before the Bad Bunny match. 
Uh, the fans are yeah. gonna cheer for Zelina. She's not gonna go over. And then later in the night, we have Bad Bunny come win, and that helps them have fans home happy. So I'm good with that. Definitely, I definitely see that um, happening. Uh, now we have the United States Championship match: Austin Theory. Uh, taking on going against Bobby Lashley and Bronson Reed. I mean, I do feel for Theory in this match because you got two huge guys that can really hit hard. And I'm kind of confused because I think this would be a good spot for Reed to possibly go ahead and get a championship. But at the same time, you're building so much around Theory, you don't want to make him look bad either. So I really, it's kind of difficult to see how we call this one. What do you guys think about this? So, in my opinion, the smart booking here would be to make Lashley look like a monster, make Bronson look like a monster, have them go in and absolutely destroy each other, have them destroy Theory, and have Theory barely squeak by, cheat to win. I think Theory should go over, but in the process, they should make Lashley and Reed look really good to the point where you have to wonder, man, how did Theory escape? But, yeah, I'm good with them keeping the belt on him and building the future around him. And um, I think it's going to be a good match for all three guys. Two-thirds big meaty men slapping meats, and then there's Austin <laughs> Theory. Yeah. Definitely. I have to agree with you. Um, Bobby Lashley's going to do Bobby Lashley things. Bronson Reed going to show why he is the resonant thick boy of the bunch, but doing some big things, but at some point, Austin Theory is going to come out, hang on to the belt in a, hey, look what I found kind of way, and as and they've done this before with, with how he won the title, so, and it turned out to be a really good way that they did it. I don't see how, how they can't do it again. He survived the elimination chamber, so I don't think you have to put him over for being tough. Austin can hang and Reed destroyed both of them the other night. Was that on the wall, I guess? I the show was on. But he did, he kind of came out there and they beat Lashley down and he, he crushed Theory. So you don't really need to make Lashley or Bronson Reed into the monster because they're both monsters. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm with you. I think Theory needs to keep the title. But <laughs> he's uh, He's got some momentum going. But, uh, you know, if they put it on Reed, it wouldn't be bad. And I think Lashley would be a great first person to have it. Heavyweight title, also. Yeah, know. definitely. He's definitely been a great yeah. career and carried at least. He's been carried at least. He doesn't look out of place being a champion. Yeah. Um. I'm with you guys. I think Theory retains, and this is a good way to set up a, a possible program between uh Bobby and uh Reed to possibly take it on maybe through SummerSlam or or you know something to that effect because those guys. They can put on, I think they can put on a nice series of matches, just those two alone. But yeah, you you put so much into theory and trying to validate him being pushed the way he's pushed by giving him a US title. So you have to make sure he retains out of this in order to keep that momentum going. So that I think that's going to be a very good match. I think it'll kind of be like how Edge used to kind of eke out those championship matches. Like, all of a sudden, he comes in out of nowhere. Next thing you know, he gets the pin, you know. Yeah. So, it, I think it'll be something to that effect. But And, uh, and that's, way, how, that's think... how you build up a heel champion. You build him up to where people are desperate to see someone come beat this guy. This guy always gets away with the belt. Who's going to finally come and beat him? And well, when he finally does drop it, it's going to be a big deal. Plus, it's a triple. And... If he had to, there's no DQ, so he can hit some out of the chair or whatever if he needed to. Yeah. And when he does win, which he will, he's gonna put put it in your face and he's gonna make you hate him even more for it. There you go. They're gonna hit and he'll be doing that on SmackDown <laughs> for, for the most part. Um then uh we'll have uh Sammy uh and KO uh teaming up with Riddle to go against the Usos and Solo Sokoa. Uh we know the history there. Uh, we know Riddle's been thrown into this, but it's actually turned out to be a nice little program between Solo and Riddle, even though it's kind of random. But I think that's going to lead to something down the line. So what, how do you think this guy's going to play out, especially since the Usos just lost their, ch their, their chance to be relevant by losing to KO and Sammy for the tag team championships yet again? Yeah, I'm curious how this is going to go because of them recently losing the tag title match. Um, I'm sure 
uh, Roman is going to threaten them. So I I can't really call this. It just depends on how they want the storyline to go. Um, Sammy and KO won the tag titles, so they really don't need to win this match, to be honest. So if I have to pick one, I'm going to say the bloodline has to win it. And I mean, they have to win it. Like Roman's going to come down on them, uh, especially after what happened on SmackDown. So let's say bloodline. And this is going to be a really tough a call, and it's going to be interesting to see what happens on Raw tomorrow um, to what, to push this. But I'm about to go, you know what? I got to go bloodline because you can't, I mean, they're, they're going to be extremely desperate. Now, you could also um, push this to where Solo could be just this close to winning up then. The Usos overcompensate trying to please Roman and they screw it up. I don't, but I doubt that that'll happen. I'm going bloodline. I don't know how this one's going to go, but I could see Solo turning on the Usos and, and uh, yeah, taking them out or something in match or them losing and then him spiking one of them or something. And, uh, it's kind of odd that they had the title match on SmackDown and not on the pay per view, but I, you know. So. Yeah, the week before that was kind of odd, but I think that's going to play into this match. I think that was done intentionally for a reason. Pressure on them to win. Uh, Riddle is a good little p- extra piece in there. He, he, he works and then so uh, work. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they do this. I don't know how it's going to work, but. I think it could go either way, but honestly, I think the bloodline will probably win because you know Kale and Sammy don't need the match. It doesn't hurt them if they lose. Well, on SmackDown, uh, Heyman did say if the Usos did not win the uh, championships, that they would go from the uh, Island of Revelance to the uh, Ocean of Obscurity, more or less. And they're now in that ocean. Uh, Solo was going to try to interfere on their behalf, but Matt Riddle stopped that. So. I think I actually got Sammy, KO, and Riddle winning um, to further push the separation of the Usos from Roman and the rest of the bloodline. But I think what would really tell the tale is how the draft go Monday night. I think the draft will actually give an indication of which way they're going to go. If the Usos are drafted to Raw, I think they are going to lose. At the pay per view, if the Usos are drafted to SmackDown with Roman and the rest of the Bloodline, I think they will win. Um, but my, I'm putting my money on Sammy Ko and Matt Riddle uh, to uh, win this out, and it'll be something like, uh, like Curtis, what you mentioned that Solo is about to win. The Usos do something to mess up, and that's how Ko and Sammy and Riddle come in to sneak the win. It'll be some. It'll be something to that effect. At least that's how I feel. Um, so go, moving on to the main event of the night, Cody Rhodes and Brock Lesnar. Um, we've seen how this has been built up, even though it was randomly, it, it seemed kind of random, but it actually makes sense because, and they didn't define why Brock did it per se, but it makes, you, you could draw your own conclusion on why that happened, but uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting match between the two, and I think they're going to put on a great match. Um, so what do you guys uh, predict for this match? Cody, absolutely. It's got to be Cody. Why would you bury him further? You know, Brock obviously doesn't need it. Plus, it make, there's more of an advantage for Cody to win than there is for Brock. If Brock wins, it's Brock just destroying some other guy. If Cody wins, it's Cody overcoming this huge obstacle in Brock and showing, okay, he's got what it takes to build himself back up and eventually go back after Roman. So it's got to be Cody. Definitely has to be Cody. Um, It's going to be a great match. And Cody, and especially when it comes to old school booking, Cody knows how to take a beating. And he has taken a many a beating. But he knows how to come back and put on an extra, a big-time comeback effort and... It's probably going to take probably three of those to get out of Suplex City with a win, and I think he will. Cody's got this. Yeah, he's going to have to hit that crossroads about three times. <laughs> oh, hey, I'll put. I, I'd go four on DraftKings if, if they if they allow it. 
I was just my dad's. What would be the over under on Crossroads giving the uh, Brock for the win to to in order to beat uh, Cody? But uh, Nuxie, what you think? Uh, I can't see Cody losing, and he's going to have to Crossroads him on the steps or the t- announcer table or something to knock him out. Something crazy. Last final straw because he he gave Roman three and he still lost. So, but yeah, Brock doesn't need the match. Brock's a Hall of Famer. He. He's his career's maybe not in the twilight yet, but he's kind of winding down. And honestly, he wouldn't be a bad guy to put that title on either. I don't think, but he's lost to Roman too. So, uh, yeah, Cody Cody needs this match to. I mean, I, who knows what they're going to do with him? But I I can't see Brock winning, or maybe you have a no contest or something. I don't know, something crazy. But yeah, I, I think Cody's going to win. Yeah. Uh- Cody does need it. I will say that. Um, he's going to have to take a beating, if, if especially to kind of harken to his dad's most famous promo, that hard times. Yeah. And Cody's going to have to go through some hard times to finish this story. And it would not surprise me if Cody took a loss here. I'm not saying he should. Not for the momentum he's building. But to kind of feed into the hard time to complete the story, I could see why they would draw those parallels. But he would have to cut a promo as epic as his dad did for their hard times, trying to, you know, Brock trying to take him out and blah, 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 in order for the fans to connect with him that way. But in the end, I think Cody still is going to pull this out, but he's going to take a hell of a beating. Yeah. And I, which, I think that beating is going to be. Yeah, and I think most of that beat is going to take place after the match. I think he's going to win, but Brock's going to probably put it to the table, put it through Suplex City another yeah. three or four, maybe five times, you know, things like that to kind of push the fact that, you know, we've seen Brock get upset on a whim real I quick. Gonna, I was actually just going to mention that. Who's to say that Cody won't sneak out a, a win and then next thing you know, Brock just goes batshit, you know what, and I just... And is that maybe we can bleep that out? But but either way, <laughs> you know where I'm going here. You know yeah. that he's going to just do something that's going to make what he did when he turned on him pale in comparison. And next thing you know, um, Cody may have to take a week off to put over the beating, and then maybe that big promo that we, we talked about. So it won't be as iconic as his father, but we get where we, where he's coming from. So let me ask you this. So let's say Cody wins and there is a post-match beatdown. Do we get a rematch? Because he's he can't just take a beatdown and then go, well, you know, I got my ass kicked. He has to get revenge. So are we seeing a rematch later on down the line between Cody and Brock? So maybe. I would say so because you can't have this kind of a match just be a one-off for a regular match. It just wouldn't make that no. much sense. Extreme rules or something like that. Or t- yeah. You don't see hell in the cell, something like that. Yeah, Brock will maybe spear him through the wall or drop him through the table, F5 him about seven times. That's a good, yeah, I could see them looking at that way for sure. Yeah, more than likely, that's probably the route they're going to go with that. And with a, you know, a blow-off match at some point, either – I doubt they'll milk it, all, milk it all the way through to SummerSlam – but it wouldn't surprise me if they would try to, but more than likely stream rules, something to that effect, or some type of match like that, whether it be on Raw or pay-per-view in June or July, that they'll probably try to wrap that up as far as them extending out this storyline. Uh, so you guys tell us what you think. How do you think the backlash card is going to go? You know, be sure to drop a comment below. Who knows? If enough of you comment, we'll actually read your comments in our next video. Uh, be sure to drop a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell next time we drop a channel. And uh, Clint, where can they find us on Instagram? It's at ringside right now on IG. On IG. And Nuxy, where can they find you on YouTube? Nuxy and Wadi's World of Wonder. That's YouTube.com at N-U-C-K-S-Y. I can't spell the name. <laughs> All right. So, everybody, once again, for Clinton, Curtis, and Jonathan, I've been Pierre. This has been Ringside right now. Let's ring the bell. Yeah,